There are also some other basic fields which I'm going to run through all of them in this video because they are relatively simple. And if you click on add field and you look at the field types, we've gone through text and text area and we've also gone through what you see is what you get editor. However, under basic, we have number, range, email, URL and password and they all kind of work the same way. They just do things slightly differently. And for example, the number field will only allow someone in the administrator panel to type a number. It's not going to allow any text. With range, it's going to be a drag and drop range for, for a number. Email will only allow an email to be entered. So if email is invalid, the page won't save. Same with the URL. If you type in a website URL and you click on update and it's incorrect, like it miss, it's missing a dot, a dot or something like that, and it's not in the correct format, it's not going to work. Password will obviously show in, a, in the password format, so you can't actually see what you're typing. But let's try them out. So let's create the number field, and we'll just call this um, my input. We'll make it a number field, and we will then click on update. We'll then go into our page and refresh it and you should see it just looks like a standard text field. So we'll go in here and create a, in, inside our template and do uh, my input equals get field. And obviously put the ID of that, which is my input. So what I'm going to do also is I'm going to remove anything out of here so it doesn't clog up the front, the front page and I'll click on update. Let's put a number in here. Let's put in say 20. But if we try and type some text, it's not going to work. Okay, so it's just a standard HTML5 number field. If we go into our template now and just do PHP, if my input PHP echo my input php and if and hit refresh you should see that number 20 comes up now if we actually do a var dump if we actually see what what the raw data looks like you should see that it comes up as a string so it's a number you don't really want it to be a string but php doesn't really know if it is a, a number or a string so we have to tell php that so if you want to actually make it an actual number or an integer as opposed to uh, a string you could just do this in php you probably already know this anyway so do int and then hit refresh and then it will be classified as a number okay so let's go back and we will we can change the field type whilst we have data in there. So we've already got 20 in there. We can actually change the type uh, to, let's, let's go to range now and hit update and hit refresh. And as you can see, the range is set to 20. So we can just kind of like do that. So this kind of would come in handy, I guess, if it's like for a review or ratings or something like that. And just hit update. And if we, we then refresh, you should see that it comes up as a string of 72, which you can obviously convert to an integer like I did before. Uh, I'll change this back to echoing out. Then we can change this to a, an email and we'll click on update, click refresh in the back end. And obviously that's not an email. So if we click on update, it's gonna come up with a validation failed because it's not an email. So let's just type in an email address and click on update, hit refresh, and there you go. So with an email, you could easily just do something like this, ahref, mail to a, and that is going to basically convert it into a link that you can click on and it will actually email or open up the email program for that specific email address. Okay, so let's take that anchor tag out. Uh, and if we go back to the fields and go to URL, same kind of thing. So we need to refresh here, type in an address, and uh, let's just type it. let's save this with the email in there because it's supposed to be a URL. If we click update, it's not going to validate. So we could do something like, HT, we could do www.google.com and see if that works. 
it still doesn't work because you need to actually put HTTP or HTTPS in front of it. So we'll click update now and it works and it saves. If we refresh, you should see the address there. And if you want that to actually link, you could obviously just do ahref and echo out the address there and then a again. So you click on it, take you to the website. So very straightforward. The last one is password. So if we change it to password and hit refresh in our admin section, as you can see, it's coming up with a password. I'll just remove these anchor tags. Um, I'll just type in test one, two, three. So yeah, it, it masks the password, but if I click update and I refresh, you should see it displays the actual text on the front end. So I'm not sure how that can actually come in handy with password because obviously you want it to be encrypted, but you could encrypt it, I guess. But that's it. That's basically all of Advanced Custom Fields basic field functionality. In the next video, we'll get down to the content fields. Thank you.